My name is Tony Stanier and uh, I've been working with the um, Southern Asia Pacific Division Youth Ministries Department the past couple of years um, and mostly focusing on one year in mission. Um, before we start today, I just want to give a quick prayer and I'd like to invite you to join me. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to talk about mission and also our identity. Uh, may the Holy Spirit guide us today as we uh, go through uh, and, and we ask for your strength and more faith to continue to grow more in love with you. May our local community see through um, us through our daily lives that they may see you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so what to expect today? Um, I'm dividing this short time into two parts. You'll be able to stop the video at any time um, if you want to discuss something within your groups. And um, also there's a worksheet, so hopefully you can download that and hopefully it's already printed in front of you. If not, just go ahead and click pause and uh, print that out and uh, you can use a chalkboard, uh, you can use your laptop, whatever gadget you have there to take notes along the way. So today I want to basically share with you some of the, some of the approaches and uh, principles that I've um, learned and experienced the past couple of years with working with young adults, especially with managing volunteers um, and young adults, um, especially with a program such as One Year in Mission. I want to say up front that this is not just a one-stop approach. It's not just one train track. These are just principles that have been effective for me. And so I invite you to um, use these principles and um, develop on them uh, that you can create a better program and uh, train uh, your one-year admission um, delegates or task force much more effective. So the first part here, we're going to be talking about mission. Um, the title that I want to put here is uh, what is the OEM culture? What is it all about? And I'm trying to put that into a nutshell. So basically the OEM culture is um, bringing it down into an aspect of being missional. And so I want to dive into the question of what what is being missional. So take a few seconds. I want you to um, write on your piece of paper. I think the question is in um, A1, section A, and question number one. What is missional for you? So take a few seconds, hit pause. Okay, so you've taken the time now to uh, maybe put down in words what you thought and how you feel and what you've experienced of what being missional is all about. And so as you write that down, there's another section there where you can write down some notes, some ideas that you get from while I'm here sharing with you uh, my experience of being missional, what it means for me, and maybe bringing in some relative biblical texts and some thoughts coming from Ellen White um, pertaining to what being missional is all about. So feel free to write down, <coughs> excuse me, anything that you have in mind. The word missional, of course, comes from the word mission, and uh, basically, we all know what a mission is. It's to accomplish something. It's to make something whole, complete again. Um, but the noun that we usually use um, from this uh, mission word is missionary. And that is someone that, that uh, goes out and does the mission, that tries to make the mission whole or, or to complete it. Um, you know, those who have watched Mission Impossible can kind of get the cliche, mission accomplished, and it hits the button. Um, to stop whatever destruction there is in the world. But in, in a more practical sense for us, we, we, we are missionaries, we are on a mission. And being missional is more of us being intentional with the calling that we have. Um, you see, the, 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 when we take this word missional, it's unique because it's intentional for that individual. And so we can maybe take a step back and maybe look at how the Bible looks at this word missional or how we can see this word um, missional being portrayed. Um, in, in, if you have your Bibles with you, but really quick, I'll just, you know, uh, bring this up. You know, in John 20, 21, this is the time when Jesus just, you know, showed himself to his disciples after being resurrected. And he says, um, as the Father sends me, I send you. So there's this part where God sent Jesus on a mission and he did 
what he had to do. And now he's passing that baton to us. Our theme, that is, for, for the youth department is pass it on. And so we kind of see how this mission work kind of, or this missional aspect kind of brings on this pass it on theme. And so let's take that concept of passing it on and bring it into a missionary-like movement. And the blessed place to start is, of course, with Jesus, him being that pass it on um, baton runner that has been from God to, to Jesus to now us, calling us. And if we can remember that in the scriptures, um, in John 5, 39, uh, Jesus says, you know, if, if that, that all scripture points to me, you know, or, or, or if, if um, you lift me up, I will draw all men. You know, there's this aspect where this entitlement of bringing us towards Christ, to bringing uh, others towards Jesus. And I think that's where we can see the intentionality now. And so for us to be missional, we have to have this intentionalness, this intentionalness of the things that we do. You see, we can talk about Jesus, like I was saying, we can know all the stories, we can memorize all the texts, all the scriptures, and, and, and maybe have books on voice of prophecy, and even be ready to be to debate in a forum. But if what we know, in what we say, and in what we do does not glorify God or point to Jesus, we're not intentional, we're not being missional. We're just giving out facts, we're just giving out stories without any meaning because it has no intentionality with the lives that we are living. And so, notice how Jesus was intentional as well with his followers. Um, you know, when Jesus called his disciples to follow him, he didn't really have like a textbook there saying, so you have to read all this before you can follow me. You know, he just said uh, in an intentional way, I will make you fishers of men. And, and them being f fishermen, they know how intentional that you had to be in that context. Because think about it. If you're a fisherman, you don't stay on shore on dry land and go fishing. To be intentional, you have to like get in the boat with all of your gear, go to the middle of the ocean or middle of the lake where it's the deepest or the best place where all the fish are, are swimming and drop your 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 line, your sinker, and, 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 and the net that you have. And that takes intentionality. And that's probably the first key that I want to leave with you um, when it comes to being missional is you have to meet the people where they are. And Jesus did that. And that's the essence of being missional is, and intentional is going where the people are. Um, in today's context, you know, we don't have to go to another place. You know, we think of being a missionary is like being, uh, we have to go to a faraway place. We have to be like, a, we, we, have, we have to be like a mailman. You know, a mailman, he takes the package and he takes it to a different location and opens it up and boom, Jesus is there. You know, the intentionality is more of being like a tour guide. Wherever we are, we're pointing out the realities of Jesus Christ, that he's in the air that we breathe and the food, he, he, he's there because of the food that we eat. That intentionality brings out how we are, how we live our lives in a missional aspect. And so being intentional means thinking about where God has placed you today. Has God placed you in a specific job, in a specific school, um, you know, or the business that you're running? That's all the water that you need for fishing. That's the open water and prime for fishing. And so being missional is all about the intentionality of your life and the skills and talents that God has given you. You know, how you're using that, the intentionality of, of, of the passions that you have, the skills that you have with helping people or, 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 or healing people or, you know, making buildings, whatever your skills are and the talents that guys give you, how intentionally are you using that can show the missional aspect of your life. And being intentional also means in the decisions that you're making on a daily basis, the choices you make of what to eat, what to say, where to go, where to travel, where to live, and where to study, and where to work, that all brings into an essence of being intentional and living a missional life. And so I want to share these two little quotes. There's a lot of quotes that, that Ellen White can can get. And, and, and I get this from the book of Ministry of Healing. And the first one I want to share with you is uh, on page 74. And it says this, Christ 
work began in, concent- in consecrating the lowly trade of a craftsman who toil for their daily bread. He was doing God's service just as much as he was laboring at the carpenter's bench as when working miracles to the multitude. Wow. Even the though I mean, even if you're a taxi driver, in today's content, a taxi driver, you're a janitor, that is just as important as giving a Bible study in our context. Um, here another one in page 470. As the badge of Christianity is not an outward sign, not the wearing of a cross or a crown, but it is which but which reveals the union of man and God. By the power of his grace manifested in the transformation of character in the world is that is to be convinced that God has sent his son as the redeemer. It's a few more sentences. No other influence that can surround the human soul as much such power as the influence of, a, of an unselfish life. See how intentional that is? And here we go. The strongest argument in favor of the gospel. You want to preach the gospel? You want to show the gospel? So it says here, the strongest argument that we have in favor of the gospel is a loving and lovable Christian. Can you see how intentional we have to be with our lives here? Being missional, being part of the OEM culture is about being intentional of how we love others and how others will love us. So for you who are participating in the OEM initiative, um, we play a special role within our youth and young adult ministries. OEM's intentionality is in how we train, how we impact the community, how we are becoming disciple makers, um, and will, will, which will ultimately reflect us being missional. You know that the brand of OEM is now the OEM culture. And in everything that we do, the training, the leading, the mentoring, and the socializing, the eating, the sleeping, the everyday normal things, all these need to point to God. And so being missional today is the way that we choose to live our lives, the things that we choose to do intentionally that points out God's glory. So I want to thank you as a group, a few minutes, go through some of the questions there, A3, A4, A5. Take some time, maybe five or ten minutes as, as a group, and then come back and play the rest of the video. Okay, so now that we're back, um, the second part here is kind of, I want to weave into it with the, the routine that we need to have uh, with being a leader and leading a team of people. A routine is very important to how effective our teams can be. And depending on your task force setup, um, depending on the endorsement that you have from your union or, or conference or whatever you know entity you're a part of, um, having a one-year admission team that is either full-time or part-time. So I've attached in your worksheet some samples or a blueprint of what a long-term and short-term one-year admission program can look like through it, through from the beginning conceptualizing to um, you endeavoring to accomplish your your projects. And in between, I, I kind of give little pointers of what you need to start preparing for as a leader. So when you get to the end, your, your t- task force will be well-trained and will have experienced leading out in a project and finalizing and maybe hopefully leading to some baptisms. The first one, letter A, um, is if you have a full-time task force, that means you're living in one location. Hopefully you're living in one location, you eat and stay within the same vicinity. It's easy for you to meet up. It's easy for you. You're always seeing each other. You, you, you have a lot of time on your hands. And hopefully the project that you have is really nearby. So you're just maybe a couple rides away or if you have a vehicle, um, you just hop in the van and drive down there and you're at your project location. Now, as a routine, this is something where you have to keep in mind um, the time that everyone has. You know, you have to make time for uh, the worships that you have, maybe group exercises or personal exercises, um, the meal time, uh, time for um, uh, your classes and your training sessions, time for preparation for whatever projects you're working on, things like that need to be intertwined into a calendar, into a daily and weekly and monthly routine that will 
give your team this healthy atmosphere of learning and also uh, living together. So think about those things. Those are just some of the ideas that you have there. But on your piece of paper right now or on your chalkboard, write down the things that you think are needed um, within a daily routine. The second uh, uh, task force that you can have um, uh, in corporation with having a routine is a part-time task force. And these part-time task forces are, are quite common um, uh, here in, in, in our division in that there's people who are you know who work full-time or go to school or have other responsibilities but then during the week they donate a certain amount of hours towards the one-year admission project and so this becomes a little bit more challenging but if you write down the things that need to be done the responsibilities and knowing the work hours that are available by your volunteers it will help you create a routine that could build bonding that can bring the that can bring the team uh, much closer together um, as as you go through your one year admission program um, so since it's different i want to focus on being part time but this will also reflect on on full time task force but in a part time task force setup you, know, you need to meet with that task force um, make a survey. Um, come up with how many hours they're able to donate throughout the week um, and then maybe calculate that for the whole month. But I inside of that, you want to see what times they're available. More Is it evenings? Is it weekends? And then through that, that, that little survey, you're able to come up when is the best time to meet for team strategic meetings, when is the t best time to do our, our projects, our, our urban evangelism, such as small group or community services. Um, it's easy to, to allot time for that. And then maybe the weekends can be involved into more training, but you want to keep in mind the balance of this, you know. And one of the great thing that, things that we have when it comes to um, having all this technology around us is we are able to use them to to maximize being, you know, being in different places. And so you can set up these chat groups um, that could have prayer time throughout the day. You could have these scheduled prayer time where people can take, can interact by making short little videos of their prayers and prayer requests and things that are on their mind that can make, you know, help you become more close. So um, be, being a part um, in, in a group in, in a part time can be challenging, but there are ways to create routines that can bring your team together. One last thing that I want to share before you break out into your groups and, and, and work on your group assignments is you want to, um, as a leader, on a monthly basis, um, have a time for one-on-one um, -on -one evaluation and also team evaluation. I personally have that. I have a one-on-one -on -one evaluation from, for each of the team members. And then I also have team um, evaluations where they've the my OEM team my, my, my OEM task force has been divided into uh, one uh, two or three teams and I will evaluate um, them by team to see how effective they are and give advice back but mostly what's great about this it's good a good way to get feedback and make sure you incorporate that into your daily or, or into your weekly or monthly routine so before you break out um, as a group um, I want you guys to create um, in, in the format that's easiest for you, a daily, weekly, and monthly routine that fits your context. Keep in mind that um, if you're planning for a full-time and part-time task force, keep that in mind. And then also keep things simple, you know, you, and also essential. You don't want to overburden your volunteers um, by having such a tight schedule. So put in there some free days, time for, for, for them to have, to, to have an outing together, things like that. And so I'll give you guys 10 or 15 minutes, whatever time you have there. Um, but work as a group. See how you can create a, a day, a week, and a month routine. All right, so we're back. Um, so now you have this mission perspective of the mindset of being part of OEM, you know, this OEM culture in that um, we want to have this DNA of being intentional uh, with our lives and in using the God-given gifts that he has given us. And I hope that the time that you've had today can was able to create a template of a routine that uh, at the end of the day, at the end of the month, creates a culture that can cultivate a culture of being missional. And so as I end, I have 
three challenges that I want to leave you with, or three things I want to leave you with. And the first one is, um, as you're leading, you know, and you're leading your group in, in a missional way, um, keep the calling of Christ above you. Keep that calling. What I mean by that is you're going to go through some, you're going to have some problems. You know, you're going to have some tough times. Uh, you're going to have obstacles during your training or, or, or you're going to have conflicts with people around you or the people that you're working with. And you never want that to get in the way of your calling. The second thing I want to leave you with is remember as a leader, you need to lead with what you teach. Um, but the teams that you have right now, they look at you, they 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 will they, they will observe you as a leader and also see if it matches what you say and what you teach. The third thing I want to leave with you is never forget to react with love and compassion before coming to a conclusion. A lot of challenges that can happen and, and conflicts that you can have, but never forget to first react with love and compassion. So I'm praying for you guys.